All right. Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar. Um, I am hoping that everybody can see all of our information. Um, I am using a new system, and I apologize if uh, if there's any uh, if there's any uh, difficulty seeing what's on here. Hold on, just a moment, please. Appreciate everybody taking the time. Hold on just a moment. Okay, so everybody should be seeing my screen. If for some reason you cannot, um, please let me know in the chat or in the um, or in the questions uh, area. But I'm hoping that you can hear me fine, and we will be getting started here. So, and again, apologize. This is a new. I have not done this on a Mac before. Um, okay, we're going to get started here. Okay, so welcome everybody to today's Maxima release webinar. Uh, we sent out the release last week, um, and hopefully you've had a chance to go through it. And there were also some slides in the email that included some uh, images to click on that showed you uh, some of the new features. That's what we're going to be walking through in today's webinar. Uh, and this seems to be one of the best ways to present some of the changes. If you have questions, please ask. I may ask you to hold to the end. Um, but if you have any questions, please ask them. Also, you're always free to email me with questions and follow up. Again, that's Lee, L E I G H, dot Kessler, K E S S L E R, at charityengine.net. So this is the Maxima release webinar. And we're going to see now what's new in Charity Engine. And hopefully you guys are seeing a lot of great new features, a lot of great new uh, capabilities. Uh, this is, we're, we're approaching, I believe, our final release of the year. Um, and then there will be, uh, that will be in October. And then there are no releases through the end of the year, through January. We know that's your busy season. Um, so we don't want to do anything that may impact your ability to use the system as you know it. So uh, you should be just looking, um, this, this is second to last of the year. So the first thing I want to show you, which is a great new feature and capability, um, is our Google Maps API integration. Uh, one of the great features of Charity Engine is the ability to draw a filter to search for contacts instead of just choosing a region, zip, or area. And to do that, when you're searching in contacts, you're really just going to go to, um, there's the general, under advanced filter, there's general and then location. And you click on draw filter, and then you draw the area that you want to include. The value here is sometimes lines of delineation of areas you're trying to hit uh, may not be clearly defined by a zip code or an area code or a specific uh, a city. Um, and maybe you want people that are up to a certain road um, or a certain area. In this, er in this vision right here, you can see these are people on the eastern uh, the western side of the eastern shore delineation in Maryland, the Chesapeake. Um, and we were able to just draw an area that says these are the people we would want to invite or search for and include in something. Um, so that's the great feature. You circle that and then you do your contacts. Now if you test that out, you may discover, uh, and one thing, if you have a really big list, um, you'll want to start by um, sorting uh, it, 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 by uh, more recent time, not all, but maybe um, uh, start, start small um, so that way you're getting as uh, you're not overwhelming the system with trying to find everybody in a certain area. Um, now this has been in there, but one of the challenges is that for this to work, you need the Google Maps um, latitude and longitude. Very easy to get, uh, and we've made it very easy for you to acquire this data. So to get it, uh, what you do is you go into configuration, um, and under configuration, um, you'll see the word Google Maps. It's under data enrichment. So configuration, data enrichment, go to Google Maps. And when you're there, it's going to explain what to do. Now, Google 
allows you to do 2,500 records per day for free. That's their standard offering. There's also business premium for higher amounts, but um, you know that's 2,500 per day, and those would be new. So what it would do, if you didn't want to go for the premium and you just wanted to get the API key, and all you do is follow the click here for more information, or click here to configure um, data enrichment job. Actually, you want to go to the bottom, which is click here for more information. That's where you'll get your key, which you apply right there where it says Google Maps JavaScript script key. Um, you can do 20, you can run it every day over the next, let's say you have 25,000 records, you could do it over 10 days. Um, so if you didn't want to pay extra, I don't think it's that much money, so it may be worth it, but at your initial startup, you can do 2,500, so multiply that time by your, um, by how many days you would need to do to reach your entire uh, contacts list. And then, once it's all been updated, it's going to every day look for, if you run a schedule a report, and we can help you do this, configure the data enrichment job so that it's automatically doing this, if you didn't want it to do it manually. Um, and it will just look for any, the 2,500 records that may have been updated. So if somebody in there, their information changed, their record, uh, their location, latitude, longitude change, then it will update it. But uh, that's what will give you the information, the latitude, longitude, so that you can use the search by drawing. Uh, you might have seen this if you ever used like a Redfin. Uh, they, um, when searching for a home, it allows you to look through, uh, to circle an area. So really cool feature, really helps you do some easy searching, um, very intuitive. Uh, so if you need help, feel free to reach out to us, but it should be easy to follow how to do it just by going to configuration and data enrichment. Um, the next, you've probably noticed a lot of additions to Report Builder. Hopefully you're using Report Builder, uh, and we will probably be doing a webinar exclusively on Report Builder in the next uh, coming weeks. But um, this just allows you, and so you're constantly, we're constantly making upgrades to this, constantly improving, adding more information. Now you have the ability to see what, which of your reports are scheduled. Um, and you can drill down to view the scheduling information. So when you're searching by report, um, you can see here that it's under scheduled. We click that, uh, and then there's a schedules column in the data display, and that will show you if it's scheduled and, uh, and whether or not it is. Um, sharing reports in Report Builder. So again, Report Builder is really growing. You may want to create your, you may be creating your own reports. Um, and just going in there and creating your own reports. But you can actually, once you've created a report, you can choose to share it with the rest of your organization or keep it private. So um, when you find your report, and that would be in the report builder part of reports and analytics, it's at the very the top left, um, you'll go to report builder and pick the report you want to share. You go to the actions button and you'll see make shared and that will share it with everybody. So that way if you create a really good report that a lot of people could use and utilize and you want them to be able to pull that easily, just make it shared. If it's a private report, make it private or just leave as it was. And you can see their visibility column. It says shared or personal. So the bottom one I have not shared. The top one, current opportunities all, I have shared. So great new feature. Get in there and play with that. Um, this is a feature that I have not seen anywhere. Uh, it's a really awesome feature for your DIY fundraisers. Um, so if you're using peer-to-peer -peer and uh, your DIY fundraisers want to be able to send an email from the system, create an email, that's in their dashboard and you can see it on the, uh, the bottom portion of the screen is the dashboard for someone's P2P and the send emails option. When they go into create email, it has a list of recipients. Now, what you used to have to do in Charity Engine was enter these people into your address book one by one. Um, and we've worked on making it easier to do. We've come up with the best system possible, which is you just type the emails into your Outlook. So if you're using Outlook, just type the emails into Outlook. And it doesn't even have to display as, uh, as an email address. As you can see in my sample here, uh, Divya, myself and Rebecca, it's not showing the emails, it's showing the name record, that's what's pulling up. Um, but we are pulling the data from that, that is the actual email portion. So you go into your two, put everybody you want to send this email to, copy it, and then paste it into the recipients list, and it will enter all of these people into your um, create email 
recipient section. So I have not seen anything that allows, makes it so easy to marry two things you're comfortable doing, which is pulling your address information from Outlook and then just copying and pasting that into uh, this different system. So very excited about the work we did there. Um, if you have questions about it, again, please feel free to reach out. Another change in the new system, you noticed a new media upload tool. Um, we've made it easier to upload and search for creative images. So uh, in the case of when you're creating a, um, when you've got a campaign and an email and you want to search for images, it's much more easily laid out. You can search for the image by name right there. You can add new files from this section. And it gives you a little bit of information about the type of file, the name, uh, and even tells you when it was uploaded. So um, so we're, we're doing a lot to make this easier to use. You'll probably see a few more um, upgrades to that in the coming releases. Um, but uh, in the meanwhile, this is a great new way to view your creative. Uh, again, Report Builder uh, is somewhere we're spending a lot of time and trying to upgrade. You know, I don't have to tell you guys, but Charity Engine is really about data. Um, the, our system was, was created so that you have the maximum amount of data in, being input into a single repository. And what we're constantly working on is how we can make it easier for you to pull that data uh, on your own. So that's what Report Builder is really all about. In this case, you'll notice that if you have survey questions on a form, um, they will appear as optional columns to export in the new Report Builder. So in this case, we're looking at transactions. These are perhaps transactions that were done um, on a peer-to-peer -peer or an event registration page or something where you, where you pulled survey information. Um, and if you have questions about using surveys, please re reach out to us uh, and we're happy to walk you through new ways to do it. It should have been part of your training, but we're, uh, if you need help, please let us know. Um, and as you can see here, some of the demo questions, the survey questions, what is your favorite color? What is your hair color? Those can easily be inserted into your custom report. So, um, so again, try, trying to put as much data at your fingertips as possible. And I think you see it with that particular functionality. Uh, small change, but kind of pretty cool if you're used to using our creative um, component of uh, creating campaigns for email. Um, as you recall, when you used to be when you selected a template, you wouldn't see that as part of your WYSIWYG. WYSIWYG is what you see is what you get. So when hopefully you know that when it when the look of your email displays the content, um, we have gotten uh, we used to have it that you didn't see the template. Now you actually do see the template in um, in uh, as part of your creative content. So it helps you make better decisions about okay, how does this interplay? It used to be that you had to click preview uh, to see the full component, but now that is now part of your WYSIWYG. So just something to make it a little bit easier to use and understand Charity Engine when it comes to sending email creative. Okay, uh, this one, if you're using advocacy, we've just added a little bit more functionality. You can add now add notes and files to media contact records. Um, so just trying to, to uh, expand this as much as possible for those of you using advocacy. So just go into an advocacy, uh, uh, your advocacy section if you have it, um, reps and media, you want to add a media, create a new one. Uh, in this case, we have James Olson. We showed in the last webinar how to cre create and use that information. Um, and now we've added notes and files. Um, deleting soft credits, uh, it's now possible to delete soft credits on transactions. To do that, you just go to the transaction. Um, and as you can see here, we have a sample transaction, a $5,000 uh, donation made from Wayne Estates. And uh, we just go to the soft credits tab. We find that particular soft credit, and then we can select delete right from there. So easy to go in and make it a, a change to a soft credit to delete it. Um, again, Reports Builder, an area of focus for us. Uh, and adding more information, we showed you before the ability to pull survey information. Now in your report builder, in grassroots events, you can pull any peer-to-peer -to -peer information too. So that will become part of the report. You just click on the column to export, 
it will move it over to the column side and then you select um, you can move it up and down by dragging and dropping um, so just gr more easily accessible data for you to utilize uh, in your grassroots events uh, in setting up our, our, um, our first party events uh, if we have done this for you, and we've created this. Now, this is something that we would need to do for you. Very often, setting up first-party events and this kind of form, uh, formatting is is something that is done by our team. Or if you have a creative team that we've worked with and is a recognized expert, uh, they may know how to do this too. Um, but uh, we now have made it so you can register additional individuals and families to a particular registration. We've just made it easier to add that information, so everything can be done in one. Uh, one complete step. And also in registration pages for first party events, we've made it, made it easy to include pre-populated answers for multiple choice surveys. Uh, so what you'll actually want to do is if you're looking um, here, this is uh, th this image isn't fully explained, but you can see are, are you running or walking? Um, Actually, I think we may have included the wrong slide here. Uh, this is not a complete slide, but essentially for registration pages for first party events, um, you can add pre-populated answers for multiple choice survey questions um, and create a default. That was not something that was there before. If that's something you're looking for, we now have the ability to do that. But again, that's something that's probably being set up on our side. So uh, those are the features I wanted to show you. We'd like to keep this quick and short and just give you a sense of some of the things that are happening in Charity Engine. Uh, you can always go into the release notes to see all of the additions that were made. If you have questions about any, please feel free to reach out to me. Again, lee.kessler at charityengine.net. Um, and let me see if we had any questions. Okay, so it looks like we don't have any questions. Uh, that's a good thing. I Hopefully we, it was well explained. Um, if you do, again, please feel free to reach out to me, lee.kessler at charityengine.net. Uh, and hopefully you see we're constantly striving to make Charity Engine better, uh, easier to use, and provide you even more capabilities around data. So uh, thank you. Hope you enjoyed the Maxima release. Um, and we're here to answer anything else you might need, and thanks for being part of the Charity Engine family.